Hello, my Bill for Thousand Nation. How's everyone doing today? Hopefully, everyone's having a great day. If not, I hope it gets better from here. All right, we are back with another that chapter. This one is titled, He Burned His Ass Down With His Wife Inside. <laughs> All right, starting off great, even with just the title. Woo, damn. All right, um. I guess let's go ahead and get into today's story. Go ahead, turn them lights down low, put on something comfy, come up with someone special. Oh, let's get traumatized. Yeah. Yeah, I have a feeling it's going to be traumatizing. Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this old video, well, uh, you, you ever, did you, did you ever, did you ever make a mistake? Right, and then to try and like cover up that mistake, you kind of um push it off a cliff. No, well, if you answered yes, you're an idiot, but you're also human, so well done. If you answered yes, you're an idiot. <laughs> oh, fuck. he ain't wrong. Oh, uh, my pal, please tell me. Uh. No sense of crying over spilt milk, and another one was my favorite one they used to tell me. Tough titty, said the kitty, but the milk's still good. This story is about someone who barely qualifies, and it takes us to Kansas. Stop already, I know you've been asking for more exotic locations, so you're welcome. There's a lot to get into, and we'll get into it, so without further ado, let's, um, you know. Give it a go. If you ever, ever wanted to live in an area where even the middle of nowhere seems busy, well then you, my friend, might want to go to Kingman, Kansas. A great place to land. Because, uh, well, there's an airport there. Why you would need to land, well, you'd be swiftly taken off again. I kid, sort of, it's grand. Uh, I mean, it's number four, whoa, in best places to retire in Kansas. So that, uh, well, I guess that kind of tells you everything you need to get in your noodle about Kingman. A quarter of the population is over in oh, best oh. place. Oh. <laughs> Overall niche grade, B minus. Public schools, the C minus. Housing. <laughs> B minus. Good families. C plus. Crime and safety B. Nightlife B minus. Diversity B. Okay. Public school C minus. I see where you know. Retiring retirement place. But why does the good families have a C plus? <laughs> I mean, I know C is, what, well, average, but a little above average is a C plus, I guess. Fuck. This is to retire in Kansas. So that, uh, well, I guess that kind of tells you everything you need to get in your noodle about Kingman. A quarter of the population is over 65. And when in a town of about 3,000 people, uh, one person wrote the <laughs> big problem was teen alcohol and smoke. My hometown is not perfect. No place is. We still have some problems like teen alcohol use and small scale drug use. Like information, marijuana, you know, the dope, the ganja, the sticky icky. The town has little in means of entertainment, which leads to the issues previously mentioned. It's a great place to start a family. Uh, we're bored. What should we do? Let's get high and look at stuff. Uh, yeah. Smoking the reefer. If that's your big problem, I think you're okay. Trust me, you're fine. So let's, you know, cut to the chase. A, a town full of potheads. I mean, where can you go wrong? Right? Why am I 
shitin' on about it. Hey family, live there. This sea cats, right? Don't, by the way, don't get confused with some kind of like 80s cartoon. Because they really sound like it, but they're not. And they, back in the day, were lucky enough to live like almost in downtown Seaman. Seacat, Kingman. Today, nothing stands there. Reason being, in 2011, April 30th, 2011, there was a big old fire. This was a little before 4 a.m. The house was entirely engulfed in flames, and someone was in that house and wouldn't be getting out. Oh, the police shit. arrived, the local firefighters, but by this stage, there, there wasn't nothing to be done. The man outside was Brett Seacat. He had been able to get his two children out of house, two and four years old, but his missus, no chance. The woman in... Whoa, hold up. Is there someone moving around up there, or is that just... I mean, I know this is leaves and stuff, but periodically it looks like someone's moving inside that window. The man outside was Brett Seacat. He had been able to See? get his two children out of house, two and four years old, but his missus... Like, no it looks chance. like it's going behind where the wood is for the frame of the window. Looks like it's going behind that. The woman inside was Vashti Seacat, Brett's high school sweetheart. It appeared from the outset that she had set fire to the house herself that night and then shot herself with a handgun found beside the bed. <sighs> Did she though? Brett and Vashti were each other's like first, first loves. As no, no, my. Did she? I mean, fuck. Ah. Oh god, it kills me. Oh. So what they're trying to say is this poor lady set fire to this house, went upstairs, got back in bed and shot herself. With her whole family in the house. They said they met in high school, they were on again, off again, uh, for a bit, you know, until in 2004, they tied that knot when they were both in their, their late 20s. Two years later, they had their first baby boy, and less than two years later, they had their second. Kingman was Brett's hometown, where they settled, settling into a happy little family. Vashti especially was an extremely loving mother. She just loved kids. Even the other kids in the kindergarten, she'd help. If fundraisers were needed, she'd be first in line to fund raise. Brett, on the other hand, a very outdoorsy, active fella, you know, he'd be wrestling with the young'uns. That's when he wasn't looking like a 1980s villain. He was in the law. He'd actually come from a long uh, line of it, you bet your bottom dollar. He had previously been a Sedgwick County Sheriff's Deputy, uh, the county, that's the county next to the Kingman, where Wichita be. But by now, and by now I mean 2011, <laughs> time travel, he was an instructor at the Kansas Law Enforcement Training Center, a job his half-brother previously held. Look at you. He'd even had a little hero moments in his policing time, giving people the old kapow! Mess with the bull, you get the horns. And so, uh, you know, a regular family, and a fire that- Poor fellow and girl's like, ah, ah, ah. I have been dazed. It does not feel well. It does not feel well at all. And, and I wasn't tased by the police. I was oh shit I, I was tased by my brother yeah yeah he got one of those taser guns that actually shoot the spikes into you and it was a place he was working at, at the time they was getting broken into a lot and the people whenever they was leaving their job even work that and they was going to the car they was getting mugged and stuff like that and he didn't want to carry a gun and like he said what the hell is pepper spray going to do uh, pepper spray does a lot i have been pepper sprayed it, it hurts like a son bitch for a long time so he got one of them he's like i want to make sure it works and, okay he's like i'll make you a deal let me shoot you and since you had to go through it 
We'll put in another cartridge and you can shoot me. Me being the young kid that I was, was like, I get to shoot you and potentially make you piss on yourself. Worth it. Let's do this. Turned around and braced myself and <clears throat> got me dead on right in the back, though. Like, only thing I remember is, like, clenching down and biting the edge of my tongue. Hitting the floor, and I did pee myself a little bit. Ever so tenderly. It took about a good 15 minutes for me to, like, and to stop tasting metal. And then it was his turn, and he refused. Well, he's an asshole. Love you, though. I haven't forgotten. Revenge is a dish best served electrified, buddy. And a loss. A hole that would uh, never be filled, you know, but how? And why? And Brett told the police something, you know, that cold, early April morning. It wasn't the fire that killed his wife. It was the gun. Firefighters managed to gain entry to the house that early. Do you say her fucking head's gone? Look at her fucking gun does she use? That's all I can say about that. The fucking Mr. Ed moment right there. Uh, why is her head gone? How big of a gun was it? How many times? Where does she. What the? Fuck. Early morning, Vashti was found lying on her bed. A gunshot wound to her head. How did it get there? Not only that, she had gunshot wounds to her chest, hip, thigh, but they would later be determined to have, you know, uh, come from the gun cooking off. The, the heat of the fire made the, the bang go bang. Brett said she had started a fire, you know, had nearly killed her husband and her two kids. And then she went off and killed herself. And indeed, in the bedroom, they found a gasoline container right beside her. So that's your start right there. Someone intentionally started some. This is, what is, oh. Never mind. I have a feeling I know what that is. And I have a feeling I know why it's blacked out. Fuck. Now it wasn't really much of a police department in semen nor a, a fire department so to get to the bottom of this they had to get the 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 kansas bureau of investigation in to well give it a goo in kingman just a week after a house fire took the life of 34 year old vashti seacat hundreds filled the chapel at central christian church to say their goodbyes and to celebrate her life the past week has been difficult for friends and family they are all waiting on answers as to why her husband a former sedgwick county deputy and two children were able to escape the house but she wasn't seacat had filed for divorce just days before the fire Neighbors say a block party planned for last Saturday was canceled by her husband right before the fatal blaze. He said she had filed for divorce and that there wasn't going to be a party. And so uh, that was the last time I seen either one of them. This amateur video shows how massive the blaze was. A couple of weeks after the fire, over the course of about seven hours, Brett told a tragic story. One of marital troubles, and ultimately a black hole that Vashti had fallen into. A hole of depression that she was struggling to keep her head above. She'd even asked him once when they were watching a flick, you know, what's a good gun to take your head off? 
and he had answered. She would get depressed over something, but she would never talk to anybody about being depressed over it because she was she was always worried about how people would view her. Mm -hmm. And even as her boyfriend, as her husband, uh, the only reason I ever even got exposed to is because I was the guy who spent the nights with her. She had been taking weight loss medication that depression you know, was a side effect of, but she had had depression for years. That just made it worse. She threw herself into the job to try and deal with it. But working long hours in H. Shore at Cox Communications in Wichita, well, then in turn, because you never can win, led to marriage troubles between Brett and Vashti. In fact, five months before the fire, in November 2010, they had begun going to marriage counseling to try and communicate their issues and find some kind of path forward. They did it help. Me bollocks. Uh, Vashti kept going by herself after Brett, well, you know, he couldn't rassle his uh, way out of that one, so he just stopped going. And then, um, Big D was on the cards between them, taking the old marriage out back and, you know, <laughs> cigarette and blindfold time. Things hadn't been good. I mean, what is is, this, is what he's saying true, though? Was she depressed? Is there proof of this? Or is this, or is this just his way of justifying that she did kill herself? Uh, and she looks sweet as shit, too. That dude. That dude should have been taking that back shot in his face. Looking like a Baywatch reject. But after they had that discussion, well, not that they'd been good before. Brett was sleeping on the couch, hence why he wasn't upstairs when the fire started. And it appeared that Brett and Vashti were getting ready to fight for their children. Uh, you know, I, I made it perfectly clear whether it was, it was truthful or not that if this went to court, I was going to do everything I could to make sure she doesn't see the kids. There would have been a few bloody noses before it was all over, but before it could even begin, it was over. He said that night he was asleep, and in the middle of the night she rang him from the floor above, telling him to get out and take the kids. He heard a loud bang. That's he went upstairs, he saw the fire, and he found that Then all of a sudden it sort of came to me. Dead fire kids. I just dropped her. And he would feel horribly, you know, responsible for all this. That it was him, you know, he he had said, you know, if you try and take my kids, well, you ain't getting, that's not happening. That's off the table. And so he felt like he had driven her to do this. Or that if he hadn't driven her, he had, you know, at least ordered the taxi. The facts, the... He called the Ubers. The following investigation uncovered supported this. In her handbag, they found a note she had, you know, where she had calculated funeral costs and so on and so forth. You know, what she would need her life insurance to be. In her car, you know, a journal recovered, basically written in it. On the last page was, farewell, adieu. On the last page, Brett, I can't do this. I can't fight this out. Take care <coughs> of our boys. Be sweet to Brendan. Talk to Bronson. Hold them both and tell them mommy loves them every night. I'm taking care of the house. Brendan, you are so wonderful. Mommy is so proud of you. Be a good big brother. Bronson, stay strong and don't ever lose that smile. I love the two of you and will be watching over you from heaven. And then speaking with, well, you know, not Brett, they learned that, yeah, you know, uh, she had been, she had been struggling. She had marriage problems. The marriage was in the toilet. She had been on, you know, medication, which did have a side effect of depression. Others said, though, she wasn't depressed. You know, difficulties, yes. Set your house on fire and kill yourself? No, no. When the police spoke with the counselor. Now we're getting into the nitty gritty of the shit. I mean, everybody goes through hardships in life. I mean, we all do. No life is perfect. 
just because things don't work out. I mean, for the love of God. I'm divorced. I have three beautiful boys with her. I see them as much as I freaking want. Do I see them as much as I would like to? No. But I see them as much as I possibly can. And they are older. They are in school. It, it does suck. But. You just cram as much as you can in there. And have as much fun as possible. While you have them. You, <laughs> but I am one of those glass eye full type people. I don't think going through a divorce, and plus the kids were young. She seemed like a very active parent. There's no way in hell they're going to take her rights away from Period. I mean, where I live, I've, I've seen straight up really crappy parents get full custody of the kid and the other parent not and it's like why 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 would you do that i mean it does happen but she seems like the type of person that everything would get put on the back burner for those kids she he even said you know she liked to help other people and stuff i mean i don't I don't understand it. I really don't. Hey. <sighs> More than likely they're going to be living in the same freaking town. He'll be able to see his kids literally probably every day. Every day if you want to. I see mine like all the freaking time. Like I have them like most of the summer, all spring break, every weekend, every weekend, unless they did something really stupid and they're grounded, which it happens. They're my kids. They're going to do stupid shit. I already know. I just, mm. she said that yes, Vashti had been depressed when they started back in November. But by April, she had done a complete 180. She was hopeful, she was healthy, she was exercising, eating well, taking weight loss medication because she was feeling good. She was excited about the divorce. Not, not that nervous about it. Her friends said it was like yeah, the old Vashti was back. The only thing that was upsetting Vashti at this point was how upset Brett was. It was like he, he was the one at his breaking point, not her. And the counselor, she was telling all this to 10 days before the fire, she said that she was worried. She said to her counselor that she was worried Brett might do something, you know, when the divorce proceedings actually started ramping up. She also said that Brett uh, had told her about a dream he had where he killed her. And it wasn't like, you know, um, oh my gosh, just a dream. It was more like, that dream fucking ruled. She was worried what he might. <laughs> He does look like a bad guy off a of Magnum P.I., don't he? He's trying not to be a joker of some sorts. What the fuck, bro? Do when she actually filed the divorce papers, when he was served, and she wanted somebody with her so that he wouldn't do anything rash. Vashti's family were full sure this wasn't what it looked like. Brett just made it look like that. In the house. I mean, he does have that background to where he could do it. Was on the table were a few bits of paper, and they were wet. It was a printed PowerPoint, and it was about death investigations, you know, deducing the differences between murders and suicides and why people might commit suicides. Brett just said it was from work. So what a, what a quinky dink. He also said that he had ran upstairs through the fire to find his wife, and he had, he had only been wearing jocks. 
Didn't look like it though. He had no marks, no blisters, no nothing. You supposedly picked her up in the bed and held her to you close. You had no blood. No, I didn't hold her to me close. I held you had no fire on the bottom of your feet. Now, if you walk through fire, you should have some kind of injuries besides a small injury on the top of one of your feet. Vashti had no smoke in her lungs, and blood tests showed no drugs or booze. And then the police spoke to a neighbor, a couple of doors down from the Sea Cats. She said that she was awake watching TV that night. She had heard a gunshot, and she knew what gunshots sounded like. Now, she couldn't say exactly when she heard it, but based on the TV show she had been watching, and the scene she said was playing, it was about 3.15 a.m. Brett called 911 at 3.40 a.m. Half an hour after a neighbor heard the gunshot. He was just faffing about. He was a cop, and he knew how to make things look like... what they're supposed to look like. Oh god, guys. But you see where we're coming from. No, 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 yeah, I see where you're coming from. I mean, this is a hundred times worse than what I had pictured in my mind. Uh, before, I just thought I, I lacked any evidence, and now you're saying... This is there's a lot of evidence that I never knew existed. Well, the heart that looks it. real bad. Uh, about a month before the fire, Brett had taken Vashti's uh, journal into work and he had scanned in all the pages. Now he would say she just wanted a digital backup of her journal. Yeah. Then the day of the fire, he had used an overhead projector in work for about an hour in a locked room. The projector, you know, was the, the kind of one to have in school as if you, were, you wanted to trace something. Just things are, are just not looking good and they're adding up to it that you had something to do with this. Damn, he was trying to cover his ass in every way, shape, or form, wasn't he? You shitball. We need to know why. Oh no, there's, there's no why. Okay. I didn't do this. I love... I'm sure you did. Ew. I'm sure you still do. But people do things to people that I wouldn't f my kids like this. Ever. I wouldn't f her family, I wouldn't f my family. I don't. I didn't. Want to give up Bash? I fought hard to try and keep us together. I could have come up with something better than this. This is insane. This is what a crazy person does. No, not necessarily. Crazy in love, crazy for his kids. Yeah. Well, did you murder her? No. Did you pull the trigger? No. Did you kill her? No. The home at 255 East B Avenue in King. Did you murder her? No. Did you pull the trigger? No. Did you kill her? No. Did they did they think rephrasing? He was gonna be like, yeah, wait, what? <laughs> he tried to bug Bunny Daffy Ducky. Holy shit. Then sits empty. Flowers of remembrance nearby. State prosecutors charged 35-year-old Brett Seacat with killing his wife Vashti and setting the house on fire to cover it up. It was on the 13th of May, two weeks after the fire, that the state of Kansas filed charges against Brett. One count of first-degree murder, one count of aggravated arson, and two counts of endangering a child. Brett pleaded not guilty, and he would never, he would never change that. Not when, two years later, the trial began. Brett T. C. Cat did then and there unlawfully, feloniously, intentionally, and with premeditation, kill Vashti S. Seacat. Your bond is one million dollars. Now it was a largely circumstantial, which we always see, we always see circumstantial, right? Full of shite. If you're defending case against Brett, you know, words, just words. A crock of shit. He said the manner of Vashti's death was actually it was never even determined. The medical examiner never said it was suicide, homicide. It was just 
In court on Tuesday, his brother Robert says he saw Vashti the weekend before her death and claimed she was depressed. She looked like she'd lost a great deal of weight, looked sleepy. A private investigator hired by the defense testified he found several vials of a drug called HCG in the Seacat's home. The defense says Vashti was taking the drug to lose weight, which has been known to have side effects leading to depression. But prosecutors have painted a different story, one of bizarre behavior, alleging the 37-year-old wrote his wife's suicide note. One witness says he watched Seacat torching two hard drives around the time of Vashti's death, a forensic scientist even finding traces of gasoline on his pants. The prosecution said, well, she was happy. She was excited about the future. And Brett wasn't going to let her go. If she took the kids away, he would take her life away. So the day he got the divorce papers served, he forged a suicide note, he shot her, and he set the house on fire made everything look like his story. And as a cop, he knew what the investigators would look for. I asked her whether she uh, would commit suicide, and she said no uh, for two reasons. One, her religious beliefs and her faith. And the second was that she couldn't do that to her boys, that she just loved being a mom. She couldn't, she couldn't leave them. They needed her. The defense said, I don't think so, buddy. She wasn't happy. She hid it from everyone except Brett. She was upset. She was depressed. She was suicidal. Devil's advocate. It can happen. I mean, I, no one ever really knows what anyone's like, you know, behind closed doors. I, I've seen it in some of my family members. Like, they struggle with depression and have manic depression and suicidal tendencies. And... You can have them out in public and everyone would think they're completely fine. And then once they get back home, it's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So I, it, it can happen. Just playing devil's advocate, not saying it's true. I'm a firm believer, dude's probably a big old piece of shit. I mean, it's a miracle we haven't got an insurance stance yet. That's all I'm saying. So... But it's not out of the realm of possibilities that she act one way in front of friends and stuff like that and act another way when they're not around. But maybe the reason why she seemed so depressed when she was around him was because he was depressing the shit out of her. I mean, that happens when you get away from someone who is depressing the living shit out of you. You're happy. You're happy-go-lucky. You're like, ah, I can breathe. And then you get back around the person that is just repressing all that back into you, and you're just like, eh. So, I mean, maybe when some of them seen her, he, she, he, she was with him, and she wasn't happy with him and depressed about it and everything else, and you can still see that. So, I don't know. I think the whole damn thing is depressing the shit out of me. She made up the threats she said Brett made. The threats she told to her counselor. She told these to her friends and co-workers too, that he might hurt her. But that was all bullshit. She was only saying that so when the divorce proceedings went ahead, well, Brett would look like a sack of shite. She did file for divorce, but the regret of her life disintegrating was overwhelming. So she decided to literally burn it to the ground. And then, you know, stuff like no smoke was found in her lungs. Well, you know, she started the fire and then she just ran in and, and shot herself. It's not like she was, you know, chilling there, sucking it up, having a beer. The main piece of evidence that could have swinged things one way or the other was the final page of her diary. The, the page that said, you know, the farewell to all that. If she actually wrote that, well then, you know, that's pretty damning proof. If she didn't write that, well then, you know, it's forged, so. Two people would testify, one for the prosecution, one for the defense. A certified forensic document examiner for the Kansas Bureau of Investigation testified for the state. And guess what? He said it was forged, if you can believe that. Some letters, they didn't match, and they didn't match the fluid writing of the previous pages. 
It was done sloppily and lacked the consistency of the previous writings. Some letters slanted one way, some letters slanted the other way. The person who had written previous pages did not write this, they said. For the defense, a forensic document, examiner testified. And they said it matched, and said that although it was written differently in parts, the, the flow of the pen and so forth and the slanting and some trembling uh, lines and blah blah blah, that could simply have been a result of mood. You might write differently if you're angry or upset or crying, a tremble in your hand. I mean, they're not wrong. And you, you could write slightly different. Wow, his defense attorney's pulling no fucking bars, bro. And someone who maybe was suicidal. But they said it was the same person who previously wrote in the journal. Uh, everyone may be seated. Um, I would request Mr. Seacat to stand. Mr. Seacat, at this time, based on the verdicts rendered by the Kingman County jury of your peers, I find you guilty of murder in the first degree. And yeah, you murderous fucking lying piece of shit. Sorry. Like I said, I was just playing devil's advocate in those parts, but no, I'm a firm believer this son of a bitch did. I mean, for one, no mother who loves her children that much is going to set the house on fire with her kids fucking in it they're not they're not going to set the house on fire go in there and shoot themselves in the head with their kids in there there's no way in fuck that's happening or two i just don't like him i don't like his face i don't like his hair and i don't like his magnum pi sunglasses bro i don't like he he just looks like a reject criminal for Miami Vice. I'm old. Shit. <laughs> I'm just... You're going to prison getting it in the bum, dude. And that makes me happy. In violation of KSA 2130... The trial lasted 12 days. And the jury found Brett guilty on all counts. I find you guilty of count two... Uh, during the sentencing, Brett some man from what he really didn't hold back, uh, especially towards towards the judge. I didn't get much of a chance to do this during trial to actually confront witnesses against me, but today I get to do that. Brett Seacat has never hurt her. Brett Seacat has never been cruel to her. Brett Seacat has never even yelled at her. Vashti's family several times after Vashti's suicide told me that they had seen this coming that they knew she committed suicide. But when it came down to money, they changed their mind. Because with Vashti's suicide, they get no money. But with Vashti's murder, they do. I said it before and I'll say it again. Vashti's suicide was my fault. I failed with Vashti and it is the first and last thing I think about every day. I understand that today is not my day. I understand, even though I'm the one being sentenced, this is not, this day does not belong to me. This day was meant for people who made sure it would happen. This day belongs to you, Judge Solomon. This is your day. This is the day you get to take your place in front of the cameras and pass sentence on a man you worked so hard to convict. A man you know was innocent, but a man you had to help convict so you could get this day, your day. Before a trial and before a verdict, you were already guaranteeing death in prison. Because that's the kind of sentence you believe will bring you the publicity you need for a Kansas Supreme Court nomination. It was at that same meeting with Ashley's family where you also made a deal to give them custody of my children after I was conveniently out of the way. Custody that would pay off in the form of Ashley's insurance, but only if I were convicted. And that's the key word for this meeting, pay off. Go ahead and sell custody of my little boys to Ashley's family. Go ahead and pass the sentence that guarantees your spot in hell. You are going to hell for what you've done in this case. Well, I heard many things today that I anticipated hearing. I heard a few things I didn't anticipate. I won't bother addressing them because they're so bizarre they don't deserve a response. On the primary conviction of intentional premeditated murder in the first degree, 
I impose a life sentence without the possibility of parole for 25 years. Damn, I mean, he came in like a wrecking ball. Holy shit. That was, that was ballsy as fuck though, bud. And the judge is like, I expected to hear some of some of a damn though. <laughs> oh fuck! You have guaranteed your place in hell, sir. Oh shit, nuggets. Okay. Well, yeah, we're going to go ahead and give you life in prison. No possibility of parole for 25 years. Oh. Well, shit. We probably should have waited for the bashing after he gave me that. Oh. Yeah, yeah, probably. And there you have it. Sad case of, you know, ooh, I ain't gonna let you, you know, if I can't have you, then nobody can. And so, well, how well does that work out? Hint, hint, not very well. It's a sad man all around. But that was his plan. Uh, not a good one to set fire to your own house with your own kids inside. Uh, well, clearly he has a few screws unscrewed. But he would have gotten away with it too, you know, if it wasn't for the pesky police investigations that's gonna have a goo out of, uh, you know, a dead person. He's a cop, you should know this. Better look next time. Oh, wait. Though honestly, I kinda gotta give it to Brett. Uh, during the sentencing part, because you know most time they're yada yada yada. I'm sorry, blah blah blah. Not this guy though. You're going to hell for what you've done in this case, and it's all for nothing. <laughs> Fucking Albert, tell him what you really think, why don't you? Right. <laughs> Not this guy though. You're going to hell for what you've done in this case, and it's all for nothing. <laughs> Fucking Albert, tell him what you really think, why don't you? Thank you so much for watching. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you for having me, Mike. Oh, fuck. I mean, you, you, you gotta do respect the balls that he had to just tell the judge. And fuck you, you're going to hell, bud. I would never be that ballsy knowing that the judge has got the sentence me. Like, I'd be up there. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, this motherfucker's up there. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. And, oh, and a big fuck you, Mr. Judge. All right, if you enjoyed today's video as much as I enjoyed today's video, I mean, only thing it was missing was an insurance dance. That's the only thing it was missing. It was mwah, muy caliente. One hot Somali, that's for sure. <laughs> All right. If you enjoyed today's video as much as I did, please leave a thumbs up. If you're a fan of the spooky, scary, strange, deranged things that just make you want to laugh, cry, and pee on yourself a little bit because... <laughs> well, that's what we do. We laugh, we cry, we pee. Think about subscribing. As always, be good to one another. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. And Mr. Judge... There's going to be a special place in hell just for you.